On day one, I will revoke Joe Biden's cruel policies on so-called gender-affirming care. Ridiculous. A process that includes giving kids puberty blockers, mutating their physical appearance, and ultimately performing surgery on minor children. Can you believe this? I will sign a new executive order instructing every federal agency to cease all programs that promote the concept of sex and gender transition at any age. I will then ask Congress to permanently stop federal taxpayer dollars from being used to promote or pay for these procedures and pass a law prohibiting child sexual mutilation in all 50 states. It'll go very quickly. I will declare that any hospital or healthcare provider that participates in the chemical or physical mutilation of minor youth will no longer meet federal health and safety standards for Medicaid and Medicare and will be terminated from the program immediately. Furthermore, I will support the creation of a private right of action for victims to sue doctors who have unforgivably performed these procedures on minor children. You just got a taste of what to expect from Donald Trump on day one of his presidency if he's able to get elected in 2024. And I, for one, will be fighting with everything to stop that from happening because he's very clearly going headfirst into the culture war since this is what's popular because Ron DeSantis popularized these culture war issues. And it's deeply dangerous because what he's saying, you can tell that he doesn't actually care about this issue, but he has to throw red meat to the base. But what he's saying is based on bad science, misinformation, it's explicitly discriminatory and downright dangerous as well. So let's talk about some of these things that he brought up here, puberty blockers being one of them. So these Republicans who talk about how dangerous puberty blockers are for trans youth, they completely pretend as if puberty blockers weren't already being prescribed to cis kids. Because believe it or not, that is the thing that happens. As Vice News explains, puberty blockers have been used for decades in cisgender kids who either are going through puberty too early or, in some instances, kids who are going through puberty very quickly. Jason Klein, a pediatric endocrinologist and assistant director of the Transgender Youth Health Program at Hassenfield Children's Hospital in NYU Langone, told Vice, Quote, their use has been FDA approved, well studied, well documented, and well tolerated for a long time now. And it's the exact same medication that we use in trans or non-binary children to basically put a pause on pubertal development. Exactly the same medications at exactly the same doses. Now, the reason why puberty blockers have been prescribed to cis kids is because if you have puberty too early, that can cause long-term problems into adulthood. It can affect your height and your bones. So this is why doctors have been prescribing puberty blockers to cis kids. But Republicans only have a problem with it when it's being prescribed to trans kids. And that's not me just strawmanning them. So in this same article, I'll link to it down below, Vice News looked at more than a dozen puberty blocker bans proposed by Republicans, and every single one of them, as they were written when they looked at this article, or when they looked at them from this article, every single one of them carves out exceptions for cisgender kids. Same medicine, same effect, but only trans kids can't have them. I wonder why that is. Now, when it comes to genital mutilation, Trump thinks that gender-affirming care means that we just mutilate the genitals of children. That's not true for one, but if he actually cared, wouldn't he focus on the alarming rate of male infant circumcisions? It's more than 50% since 2010. And when it comes to intersex infants born with ambiguous genitalia, well, why isn't he addressing that? Because that is indeed an issue. As PRISM reports, most intersex surgeries are performed on children younger than two years old. These medically unnecessary procedures are done to align children's genitalia and reproductive anatomy with gendered social expectations creating lifelong harms such as scarring, chronic pain, chronic incontinence, loss of sexual sensation, sterilization, inaccurate gender assignment, and trauma, according to the National Health Law Program, an organization that works to protect and advance the health rights of low-income and underserved people. So for a very long time, intersex people just being born with ambiguous genitalia had surgeries conducted on them before the age of two also, that way they can align with societal heteronormative standards. But Trump isn't saying anything about that. And it's because 
this is just about demonizing trans people. Now, gender affirming care, when it comes to younger trans kids, that just includes social transition, a name change, new pronouns, different clothing. And when it comes to older kids, teenagers, that includes puberty blockers, and it also includes hormone replacement therapy. But that's only if they have persistent gender dysphoria. So it's not like you can just declare yourself trans and go to the doctor and transition and get the surgeries immediately. I mean, if you're a trans adult, you can't even do that, first of all, because um, it takes years of treatments and working with the doctor to confirm that you do indeed have gender dysphoria. But even if you qualify for bottom surgery, for example, as an adult, it's extremely cost prohibitive. So Republicans are using their ignorance to enact laws that are deadly, that are going to harm people, that will increase the rate of suicidality. Now, contrary to popular belief, trans youth... This isn't like some trend that they're hopping on. A long-term study conducted over five years found that out of 317 trans kids between the ages of 3 and 12, only 2.5% of them reverted back to the gender that they were assigned at birth. And of the 2.5% referenced in that study, we don't know if these kids just changed their mind or they were bullied and social stigma made them revert back to the gender that they were assigned at birth because when it comes to trans adults many of them who end up detransitioning do so because of social stigma now not only is it not a trend but it's also medically necessary lgbtq nation explains contrary to trump's statement there is growing evidence that providing gender affirming health care to young people improves their mental health gender affirming care for adolescents and adults has been endorsed by the american medical association the american academy of pediatrics the american psychiatric association and many other professional groups as necessary and frequently life-saving for transgender individuals such care for young people rarely involves surgical intervention and to the extent that surgical intervention is involved that usually refers to top surgery for trans boys when they're older teenagers but that's the key here this is medically necessary life saving care that is gender affirming care so by stopping something that is life saving you are killing these people you are killing children but Trump doesn't care because he thinks that this is a new phenomenon that just happened over the course of the last couple of years. And as president, he's going to stop it from happening. He's going to end it. My Department of Education will inform states and school districts that if any teacher or school official suggests to a child that they could be trapped in the wrong body, they will be faced with severe consequences, including potential civil rights violations for sex discrimination and the elimination of federal funding. As part of our new credentialing body for teachers, we will promote positive education about the nuclear family, the roles of mothers and fathers, and celebrating rather than erasing the things that make men and women different and unique. I will ask Congress to pass a bill establishing that the only genders recognized by the United States government are male and female, and they are assigned at birth. The bill will also make clear that Title IX prohibits men from participating in women's sports, and we will protect the rights of parents from being forced to allow their minor child to assume a gender which is new and an identity without the parent's consent. The identity will not be new, and it will not be without parental consent. No serious country should be telling its children that they were born with the wrong gender, a concept that was never heard of in all of human history. Nobody's ever heard of this, what's happening today. It was all when the radical left invented it just a few years ago. Under my leadership, this madness will end. Thank you very much. That ranged from incoherent to genocidal, and either way, it was deeply disturbing. So for him to incorrectly state that this is a new phenomenon that just popped up two years ago and that he's going to end it? That's genocidal. That is genocidal. And no, trans people have not just popped up into existence over the course of the last couple of years. They just have more visibility now. And because you were ignorant doesn't mean that they weren't always around. But he's going to end it. That rhetoric right there should give 
everyone pause because it is deeply dangerous. Now, let's try to parse out what he says with respect to parental rights here. He says, quote, we will protect the rights of parents being forced to allow their minor child to assume a gender which is new and an identity without their parents' consent. The identity will not be new and will not be without parental consent. Um, it's really hard to figure out what he's talking about here, but essentially what I think he's trying to say is that, you know, if a child goes to their teacher and says, I'm experiencing gender dysphoria, or I think that I may be a girl or a boy, that teacher is not allowed to tell that child that they're trans because that's stripping consent away from the parent and they have to be able to consent to their child being trans. Now, he says this, but simultaneously, he also wants to revoke consent away from parents by banning gender-affirming care. So, which is it? Do you want parents to be able to consent to what their child can and can't receive with regard to care, or do you want to take that away? It's incoherent. But causing chaos is part of this project because more chaos leads to confusion. It leads to doctors being more precautious and a little bit more reluctant to prescribe gender-affirming care to trans youth. And it's all part of his plot to try to erase trans people out of existence. Now, when it comes to uh, men participating in women's sports, what he referred to was adults, but most of these bans proposed at the state level refer to high school girls. And almost every single one of them involve cases where the lawmakers don't even know of one example where a trans child has caused a disturbance in their high school. In an AP analysis from 2021, Republican legislators in 20 different states proposed these bans, but none of them could cite a single example of a trans girl causing a disruption at her school. Now in 2022, a 13-year-old trans girl in Kentucky helped recruit enough players to form a field hockey team at her middle school, only to be subsequently banned from playing on the team that she literally helped to create. Again, the team would not exist without her. She's the one who convinced her friends to play in this sport. And it's not like they weren't aware of this, right? That this ban would affect one child, one known trans athlete. They actually heard her testimony and they still thought, yeah, we still wanna ban you from the team that you helped to create. Do you understand? Like, this is just about cruelty. But focusing on kids is a Trojan horse currently because that to them is what is socially acceptable. Their ultimate goal is to ban adults from transitioning as well because they want to erase trans people from existence. And we're starting to see that now. For example, Oklahoma has proposed a ban on trans people up until the age of 26, forcing many people in that state to detransition. And one Republican even admitted that this was their long-term goal. As Emma Viglin pointed out via Twitter, here's a Republican activist admitting that the long-term goal behind anti-trans bills attacking gender-affirming care for minors is to eliminate transition care for adults. The hand-wringing about the children is just a useful wedge for broader bigotry. And here's what the article that she referenced states. And Mr. Schilling of the American Principles Project confirmed that his organization's long-term goal was to eliminate transition care. The initial focus on children, he said, was a matter of going where the consensus is. So this is how these things always pan out. They create a moral panic based on think of the kids. And then from there, they go on to try to discriminate against adults. But in the case of trans people, we're not just talking about typical discrimination where they want to restrict your civil rights. We're talking about them literally trying to erase trans people out of existence, forcing them to detransition. This is extremely cruel, and they know that this would lead to an increase in suicidality and more deaths, but they don't care. This is what they want because they don't want trans people to exist. We heard Trump say it. He's going to end all of this because it's a new thing. This is tantamount to an attempted genocide, and people have got to wake up. So, you know, here's the thing that I want to say here. Republicans have made it their mission to erase trans people out of existence. They're all in lockstep on this particular issue. And I have my criticisms of the Democratic Party. But with that being said, anyone who tries to equate these two parties is being purposefully disingenuous. Because yes, the Democratic Party is too capitalist, too overly corporatist, but they're not trying to wage an all-out genocide against trans people. Can I say that they should fight more? Yes. 
Are they overly ambivalent? Do some of them not even care? Absolutely. I think that that's fair. But that is much more preferable to a party that is literally trying to erase an entire group of people out of existence. So anyone who says that there's no differences between these two parties, I mean, this issue makes it crystal clear. One party wants genocide against trans people. The other party, at worst, just doesn't care. I mean, it really is a case of this is trans people fighting for their lives. So anyone who perpetuates this false equivalence needs to be called out because obscuring the differences between these two parties is causing real harm. We cannot let these fascists get anywhere near power. And I will be fighting tooth and nail to stop Donald Trump or Ron DeSantis or whatever fascist the GOP base decides to choose in 2024. Because this isn't just about, you know, um, choosing the difference between the lesser of two evils. It's about trying to keep trans people alive in an environment that has become incredibly hostile towards their existence. Mike is a total shit lip. Once he started chilling for the DNC, I stopped watching. So I definitely won't be hitting the subscribe button or turning on notifications by clicking the bell. No way. It's very sad, I know.